Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG. I'm at Cala County College here. This is my alma mater. I've got Bob Moffat with me, who's the head welding instructor. And in this segment, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're planning on doing some TIG welding, but we've got various materials here. We don't know what they are. And, you know, there's certain things you can look at and kind of give you an idea. But I'm going to turn this over to Bob because he's got several ideas of what the material is and how to test them. So, Bob, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to have you. Hey, you, you've got, looks like a little bit of everything here. So uh, show me how you identify, how you would tell your students out there what metal they're about to weld. Okay. If we, if we just take the grinder and, and rub this piece on the grinder, we're going to get some kind of a spark stream off of it if it's carbon steel. Uh, and I expect that the stream would be fairly long. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, okay so, so, so what we had was something that was fairly long, and you notice we had what we call this finger burst thing coming off of mm -hmm. it. Um, that would indicate some carbon, some carbon in the steel. Um, now, okay, so because of the length of it, you'd say it'd be low carbon then? I would say low carbon and or mild steel. Okay. Um, we could take another piece of the t pipe or even the square stock here, and we could grind on it for a second. Now, again, fairly long so uh, and yellow. Okay, so we know that that's mild steel. Okay. Now... Uh, something that is higher carbon steel but not yet cast okay something with a higher carbon steel uh, that spark stream is going to get shorter and it's going to have more burst to it it's going to really flare out and sparkle quite a bit more and a lot shorter away from the grinder that okay. would indicate a lot higher carbon uh, this is old time cast iron. Now, we, what do we know about cast iron? A lot of carbon. Plus, this is old time. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll just say that this piece is 100 years old. Okay. Okay. So I, I'm going to have to clean this up to make a repair later on, so I don't mind grinding on it a little bit. much of a spark at all. No, and it looks like you made very little progress as, as you ground, so <laughs> it's pretty... Got, it's got a lot of carbon in it. I could barely see the color yeah. as you were sparking. Another another way, you know, this is a break, okay? Uh, another way, if you've, if you've done some research or taken some classes in, in materials and material testing, as you can tell by this grain structure, what does this break look like? Um, we used to use a lot of drift pins where we're bolting things up, multiple bolt hole circles that don't, you know, when you fabricate them, they're not perfectly round, but they're gonna bolt up. Yeah. And, you, and we're slamming these drift pins in. It's like an iron worker goes up and, and they're bolting the beams together and they've got a, what they call a pin and wrench. Okay, and that's a high carbon piece of steel that's tapered. It'll take a beating. It won't take any sideways. It's, it's pretty brittle when you go sideways with it. And okay. that, that fracture is a real close grain pack where you look at this and it's kind of rough. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah, you know, it's interesting when you get into the pieces of carbon steel and what they're alloyed with. Um, another simple test is just a plain old magnet. Um, carbon steel magnetized. So we're picking this thing up, it's pretty good size. Cast iron, we're magnetized, but this piece is kind of heavy, but definitely magnetized. Okay, um, here's my copper tungsten holder, non-magnetized. You know, this end is painted. I, I wouldn't be able to tell what that was. I could see that it's a fitting, but I really wouldn't know what it was. But this has that copper color to it that we can appreciate. Now, if we ground on this or sanded on it, we're going to get a spark. 
I don't think so. I don't think so. It doesn't have any carbon to it. There's no steel to it, and that's where your that's where your spark per se is coming from. A um, couple other samples here. Well, we've got some thin walled stainless tubing. Are all stainless grades of stainless non magnetic? Uh, most of them are non-magnetic, but there's one series of stainless steel that is. Yeah, you get, in, you get so, in, into the 400 series. So again, you know, we've got some color brightness here. Um, see, we've got three metals here that, you know, they kind of look the same. We haven't picked them up. We don't, they're, they're different thicknesses. But, Very good, yeah. But they kind of look the same, do they not? They do, they do. Um, you know, we'll pick this one up and it's... It's fairly light, it's got some heft to it. That's pretty light. Okay. That's a little heavier. So, you know, these welds have, uh, they're gone, they're burnished off, they're flat with the parent metal. So, how do we, how do we identify this? Uh, let's stand them up and see if we can get a spark test off of them. We've got a we've got a spark coming off of here that's kind of a dull red, yeah, and, and it's not real long. It, it's just kind of out here, away from the grinder, and it's kind of a dull red, meaning it's got some carbon to it. But what else would it have in it that creates that dull red? Chrome and nickel, possibly. I'm going with stainless on that. A non-magnetic series of of stainless. Uh, let's take this one here. Uh, again, these two look pretty similar. Uh, we'll see if we can get a spark off this one. No spark, no spark whatsoever. And then we look at the edge where we ground on it, um, real bright and shiny. Yeah. Looks pretty uh, soft too. Yeah, I gotta go with aluminum on that. Yeah. No spark whatsoever. Um, by the way, it, it's not it's not preferred to be grinding on aluminum with just a regular grinding wheel. Um, they make grinding wheels specifically for aluminum that, that look pretty much like this. So, okay. Uh, that's one of those safety issues we wanna get into. Uh, we don't wanna grind aluminum with a regular uh, wheel designed for carbon steel and stainless because it'll load that thing up and take a chance of exploding. Um, so, you know, as far as the color, you know, these two look pretty pretty close. They're kind of a dull gray. This one's been sitting out in the weather. This one, uh, you know, what is this? It's not, it's not heavy, heavy like the stainless is and it's not lightweight like the aluminum is. So what's left? What do you, what do you what do we think this is? I don't know, something like unobtainium? <laughs> Un unobtainium. You're welding on alloys I've never heard of. What, what kind of filler wire are you use for that? <laughs> Let's do a spark test and see what we get off of it. Okay. Wow. Yep. That's, that's different. White. Now, what is that? White. Uh, that's, a, that's a white sparkle show. What is that? Well, it turns out that uh, that's titanium. Wow. So why does it produce such a white stream? Why, why is it so you know, it, it doesn't kind of prevalent, too? It was getting out there and it, producing quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. It, it has no carbon in it whatsoever. That's one thing. Huh. There, uh, yeah, 6.4 titanium, 6% aluminum, 4% vanadium. But aluminum has no spark. Interesting. So we've we've covered quite a bit. So let me uh, let me recap here. Let's let's go from the start. That was deemed to be steel, kind of a mild steel, low mm -hmm. carbon because the the sparklies were red. Yeah, kind and, of a long yellow spark stream. Yeah, yeah. And they they shot out here quite a ways. This this was deemed to be what. That was our cast iron, our old time cast iron. I was a little disappointed that we didn't see more of the, the burst, but uh, I, I think we've done this test over on the sander. The belt sander produces a nice stream, whereas the, the grinding hand grinder maybe 
uh, maybe getting loaded up or just sitting on top of it. So Okay, so the, the little sparklers coming off here, it was hard to even see them. They were short, and they had more of the, the finger burst that came away from okay, it. Okay, so the that represents it had a higher carbon content. Okay, so then we went to this right here, which looks like copper, smells like copper. Smells like copper. Probably got some tungsten hiding away in there. You know, and it's non-magnetic, so we checked that. And yes, it's very much what you'd see down at the hardware store. Copper piping. <clears throat> okay, then we, uh, we went to this one. Again, weight was a factor. The grinding on it, it ground very quickly and easily. It kind of smeared soft, when it ground. Yeah. So it's soft, no sparks at all. So Real, real shiny on we, the corner. Yeah, so we, we know that that's some alloy of aluminum. Okay, and then uh, this one right here looks really good, looks shiny. Uh, you know, at first you think, gosh, it possibly could be titanium, but we did a, a spark test on it. Um, Non-magnetic, spark test proved to have a couple of little... It, uh, it, it produced a spark, yeah. and so we, we, know we've got, uh, we know we've got some carbon present. Yep. So that would be deemed as stainless, and of course this one was so pronounced where you get the really bright white sparklies, that's, a, that's kind of a, a characteristic of titanium. Unmistakable. Again, non-magnetic. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll continue to find other materials and identify them for you, and there's all kinds of ways. This is just kind of a, uh, a cheap and dirty way if you don't have any instrumentation. You know, we've just got a grinder and a magnet and, and eyesight and a little bit of knowledge. Well, Bob, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having us at your place. Sure. And thank you, thank you for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. To stay up with the latest TIG welding technology and education, subscribe by clicking the button below.